Hey everyone, welcome back. In this lesson, let's learn how to mask so that we can apply filters and local adjustments into specific areas of our photograph. And we'll also play around with using multiple layers. So inside of our effects tab here, when we add a filter, I'll just add the glow filter and we'll use a pretty intense one. She used this one here. Once we apply this filter, if we turn this off and on, you can see it's being applied to the entirety of the image. But let's say we just want it applied into a specific region. Well, there's a few different ways we can achieve that. One of the most basic ways is to use your masking brush, which you can grab by just hitting B on your keyboard. I can hit B on my keyboard. That will grab me my masking brush. I can then paint this in or out of specific regions on my photo. At my top tool modifier bar here, I typically use a feathering of 100 to have a nice soft brush edge, and I typically use an opacity of 100 so that I am removing or painting in this filter at 100% strength. So let's go to erase rather than paint so that I can paint this away from the bottom of my image. So if I turn this off and on now, now that glow filter is only being applied to the sky. If I want to paint that back in, I can just choose paint and then I can paint this into specific regions as needed. Now within our masking options here, we can view the mask by just selecting this little icon here right next to the filter name. Same thing with local adjustments. This will pull up our masking properties. To view the mask and see where you've painted it in, you can just choose this option here. In masking, white reveals and black conceals. So you can see within these areas where it's all painted white, that's where that filter is being applied to. But if I were to paint this away, it will turn it black. Now if I view this, you can see it's painted away from that bottom section. And you can also see that within this black area of the mask. Let's just reset the mask here. And let's talk about another tool that you can use to mask in filters or local adjustments, and that is the masking bug tool. To grab the masking bug, just head up to your top modifier bar within the mask tools, and you can hit M on your keyboard. And that will select your masking bug, or you can just grab it by clicking on this icon here. With the masking bug, that's going to allow you to use gradient shapes and radial shapes to apply filters and local adjustments into specific areas. So with my shape right here, it is a gradient shape. So if I drop this down, I can use this gradient shape to apply this into specific sections of my image. Let's say I just want it on the sky. I can use this smaller handle to rotate the mask, I can use this larger handle to position, and then I can modify the feathering with the perforated edges there. So if I view my mask, you can see white is revealing the filter on the top area of my photograph where my sky's at. And then the black area at the bottom is concealing that filter from being applied to the scene. Now I can also use different shapes. So I can go up to my shape option here and I can choose center or edges. Let's just choose center. Oops. All right, we'll just choose edges. We'll start with edges here. So within edges, you can see that it's applying the filter into the middle section of my image. And it's protecting the outside edges. I can use this larger handle to move the mask around. I can use this smaller handle to rotate. I can modify the size and shape with these solid handles there on the edges. And then I can modify the actual size with just the line around the edges. I can also modify the feathering there with the perforated edges. Now it'd be the exact opposite look if I were to invert the mask. So if I inverted the mask here, you can see now we're almost creating sort of a vignette look, but the mask behaves the same way. We can modify 
the size there with that line. We can modify the shape with these solid handles. I can then position or rotate with the inner handles within the mask and then feathering with the perforated edges. And you can use these same tools with local adjustments as well. So if I go in and I add a local adjustment, let's just darken the exposure quite a bit, maybe add in some contrast and boost the whites. And I'll use my masking brush and I can paint that in with my masking brush and you can see it's being applied directly into the areas that I'm painting it into. I can also use my masking bug. I can select that up there in the top tool modifier bar and let's use our gradient. I'll drop this down. You can see I'm using a gradient shape to apply this into specific areas. Then I can use edges or center as needed. And this will apply my local adjustment into specific regions within my photo that I needed to be applied to. Now those two tools, the masking brush and the masking bug are a little bit more of a manual way to apply masks inside of Photo Raw. Let's go ahead and talk about the Super Select AI tool, which we can use to target specific regions automatically and apply those adjustments a lot easier. So we're gonna head over to the left side of our screen and I'm gonna choose Super Select. It's this little tool right there. Once I select that, I can hover over different regions of my image it will then highlight them. I can select them and then apply adjustments to them. So if I want to modify the sky, you can see I've hovered over the sky. It's showing me that blue overlay indicating to me that it knows that's a region. I can then right click and now I have local adjustments that I can apply to it. I have all of the different filters within Photo Raw that I can apply to it. And once I select a specific filter and its style, it will add that filter in to the effects tab and it will create a mask automatically for me. So let's lower the opacity, it's a little bit too strong there. And then let's hit K on the keyboard to grab the Super Select AI tool. You can also grab it over here in your tool well. And I'll grab the water here and let's add maybe a local adjustment that darkens things up a bit. So now in my local adjustments, it's created that mask automatically for me. Now all I have to do is go in and just fine tune it as needed. Let's say we just wanna modify this dock here. I'll just select it. Right click, let's add in some detail with dynamic contrast and I'll use surreal. And now with our dynamic contrast, we're bringing in detail into that specific region there. So that's how easy it is with Super Select AI. Just simply hover over the regions that you want to modify, select them, right click, and then add in any local adjustments or filters as needed. Now let's learn how to work with multiple layers in the edit module and blend them together. So I have these two layers that I want to merge together and play around with the different regions within them. So I'm gonna select the layers. Now, because I'm selecting this image first, this image is going to set the canvas size for my edit. So whichever image you want to set for the canvas size, make sure that image is selected first. It will have this blue outline meaning it's the first one that you have selected. So with my images selected, I'm just gonna head over to the right side of my screen and I'm gonna choose this layers icon here. That will bring in my two layers into the edit module here. And in the layers pane, you can see we have our two different layers. So with my top layer here, it's a little bit large compared to the first layer and I want to see a little bit more of the bottom section so I'm going to hit V on the keyboard and I'm going to go up to the top tool modifier bar and with my transform tool selected which is V on the keyboard I can modify the size and the position. I'm going to choose this little icon here 
which will allow me to fit that to the canvas there. So now it looks a little bit more natural within the scene. So from there, I'm going to make sure that I have the masking option selected for this kayak layer. And I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to grab my masking bug. You can also grab your masking bug by heading over to your masking tools. And then it's this little icon here. And I'll just drop this down. I'm using that gradient shape. I'm going to lower the feathering a bit. Just like that. And now I have pretty much two images combined with one another. Now, because I'm modifying two different layers, I can modify each layer's tone and color and their style independently of one another. So for my kayak layer, I'm going to go into my tone and color and I'm going to pull up on my midtones a little bit to match the brightness of the image that I have in front of me. Add in a little bit of contrast and we're also going to go down to the temperature and we'll cool it down a little bit to match this top section of the photo. Maybe not that cool. It's a little bit too cool. But if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, by boosting those midtones and the temperature adjustments, it's really helped to match that scene that we're going for. So once we've combined these two images, I'm going to go up to my layers pane here. I'm going to right click this layer and I'm going to choose new stamped layer. That's going to duplicate these two layers and then merge that duplicate into one composite layer that I can then modify as a whole. So if I go into my effects tab and I add a filter, let's say I add a creative filter such as LUTs, it's going to modify the entirety of the image, not just each individual layer independently. So we'll use this ice option here to give it a nice creative color grading. And we'll rename this composite. And I'll just turn off my kayak layer here and we'll check out the original lake layer. And then this is after with our kayak layer incorporated into it. So that's how to work with multiple layers and how to mask inside of On One Photo Raw 2025.